Hey guys, Harley Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the ability system that we started, and more specifically, we're going to be looking at ability behaviors and uh, basically starting to model our first behavior. So uh, you might be seeing these errors here. You won't have them, but it's because I changed. Um, I started changing uh, how I wanted to handle some basic information, and I realized I messed something up, and I just didn't delete everything. But we're going to go over that because this is we're going to be adding this today as well. So let's go in our scripts folder, and here we have our ability system or ability behaviors, and basically we're missing this reference that we're going to create right now. So first things first, let's create a new script and new class. So uh, in our scripts folder, let's click create, and we're going to create a new C sharp script. And it's going to call be called basic object information, like that. And let's open that up into um, Visual Studio. Reload. Okay, so here we have basic information. And what we're going to be doing, and why I want to do this, is I want to add, we know almost every single object right now that we've ever created in this project has a string for it has a name a description and probably has an icon so what we want to do is create a class or a structure or whatever an object that stores that information because almost everything has it and that's what we're gonna do with this basic object information class so first let's create a couple private strings give me a name private string description you know the basic stuff and then a private sprite icon okay uh, and now we're going to create a whole bunch of public uh, constructors. So we're going to have a public uh, a constructor he a constructor here, excuse me, that only takes a name. So it'll be string name, uh, and we'll call it o name. Okay, uh, and we're going to set name equal to o name. Uh, and then I'm just going to copy all that because we're going to create two other constructors one that takes a name and a uh, description O description right so now we need to add that in the constructor so we'll say description is going to be equal to O description object description uh, and I'm just going to copy this comma onward and paste that down here and I'm also going to copy the description is equal to O description and paste that in there as well uh, and then we're going to add one more argument here for a sprite. And we'll call this O icon. Now, you might be wondering why we're doing this. Well, this really gives me the opportunity to um, create where we're able to create an object with just a name, a name and description, a name, description, and an icon. Uh, and we can add a few more here. Maybe you have a name, an icon, and no description, or uh, a description. It's up to you, but basically I know I'm going to want a name on everything. I might want things with the description, and I might want things with the description and icon. Uh, you can add or leave as little as you want. This is up to you. Uh, and maybe you're working on a team, so maybe you want them to have the ability to do that. Uh, so now we're going to add a couple public getters, public getters because we want to make sure that they can access the information. So we're going to call this one object name. We don't want them to edit it, and that's why we're not setting uh, adding setter so we're just gonna return name and I'm gonna copy all that control C to copy and come down here and paste two of them or yep and the other one's gonna be object description like that and I'm gonna copy oh descript uh, excuse me description here and paste it and the last one's gonna be a sprite which will be our object icon and that's just gonna take icon which we need to actually assign it in the constructor here so we'll do that we'll do icon it's gonna be equal to O icon that alright so what we've done here <clears throat> is we've created a very simple class it takes a name a description and an icon those are the private variables excuse me and we created three public uh, constructors for it to allow us to build the basic object information object in three different ways uh, and then we've given it three ways that we can get the information. We can get its icon, its description, and its name. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to show you how we use this in our base ability class. So in our base ability class here, uh, I've actually have already added it, and it's because I was recording another video and I scrapped it. Uh, but basically, what we do is we replace the name, description, and icon with a private basic. Let me zoom in. A private basic information and I called it object information or object info and now in our two constructors here 
Instead of passing a string for name, a string for description, and an icon, we're just passing in basic information, right? Uh, and so it cuts down a lot of code. And I also was able to get rid of three of the uh, getters that we had, right? So we just have one, ability information. Pretty simple. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. Uh, but now that we have that, let's go ahead and start on our ability behavior. This is the ability, this is the base ability behavior class. So we need to talk about some things that are going to be in it. The first things first, we know we're going to have a private basic information. Uh, and we'll call this object info again. And we know we're going to have some sort of, or I would like to have some sort of way of knowing when this behavior should be applied. And so in this case, we're going to create a public enum. And this can be done with interfaces, but we'll use enum for now. We might use, uh, we might create interfaces later so that we can use polymorphism later, but uh, we'll discuss it when we get to that point. So right now we'll do a public enum. And what we're going to do is call this behavior start time. We'll do start times. And right now we'll have uh, beginning, middle, and end. Uh, we might add more, we might take away more, some, it, I'm not sure yet, but this is, I know, we were going to have some abilities that do things at the very beginning, in the middle, and the end. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and add a private variable here for that, and we'll call it behavior start times, and that'll be its type, and we'll call it start time. Now we want to add a constructor, so we'll do a public ability behavior, and uh, we'll say we know what's going to take basic information so we'll say basic info uh, and we know it's going to have a start time and we want to make sure that we send a start time so we'll call it s time like that now what we need to do is send in that information or when we send it we need to set it to it so we'll do object info is equal to basic info pretty simple and then we'll do start time is going to be equal to s time now there's one other thing that we want to do and we're going to make a public virtual void so that we can override it in the different uh, classes that we create so we'll have a public virtual void and we're going to call this perform uh, behavior and I don't really like that so if you guys come up with a better name let me know uh, basically this is what we're gonna call when we do the behavior kinda of thing uh, and I don't like perform behavior maybe it should be action I, I'm not sure but let, let me know if you guys got a suggestion in the comments please so uh, right now this is their basic we're gonna call this method whenever we want the behavior to do whatever it's supposed to do uh, and the reason why this is gonna be virtual is because we want to make we want to include it in everything but if we don't include it on a class we want to have a basic setup of what it does and I'm not sure how this is gonna work just yet so we're gonna leave it blank but I know we're gonna want it so now that we have that let's go ahead and create a uh, two public getters and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this basic information one like that or that's in the ability info so I just highlight it and control C to copy it I'm gonna paste it and do our ability behavior and I'm gonna add behavior between ability and info here so it's gonna be ability behavior info that and we're gonna return object info and then the last one it's gonna be a public and it's gonna be behavior types start times and it'll be uh, ability behavior start time and we'll just do a get and we'll return start time pretty simple but uh, we want to make sure we include that because again it's smarter it's safer to have public variables that access the private variable, so we're not actually editing the private information. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, let's start working on a basic start, uh, basic class, um, and let's start trying to model the fireball. Which, if you remember correctly, if you remember in the introduction video, I said the fireball is the spell that we want to create first. So what we'll do actually is let's go into Unity here and we're going to create a folder and once I hit create we're going to create a folder and we're going to call it behaviors and then I'm going to create one other folder and we'll call it abilities uh, abilities yep. 
And I'm going to drag and make sure that's in the ability system. And we're actually going to get rid of this eventually. But I want to make a fireball spell. The uh, fireball ability first. And I want to have that so that I can model. Kind of explain what we're going to be doing. Like show you the old way of doing it. And then show you the new way of what we're going to do. Kind of thing. Uh, but anyways, under behaviors, we're going to create a new behavior. And this is going to be ranged. And what I want to do, want you guys to do, is open that up. Reload. And... Oh, and go back into Unity and then open up Fireball Ability. Uh, we'll delete Model Behavior, we're not going to be using it. And I kind of just want to use this as a basic structure to, to kind of let you know what it's going, how we're going to do this. So, we have this Fireball Ability that's going to really inherit from Ability. So I guess we can add that. Right? And we can add the information, we, you know, we can call this Constructor and we can add all the different types of information we want. Uh, but really, I just want to use this place as a way to add to. We can kind of design the ability here with comments and kind of talk about it, and then that's how that's what we use to create the different behaviors and stuff. So uh, we know it's ranged, right? And we know range is going to happen at the beginning, so at the start. And what else? Um, I guess that's really it. So that's I mean for range, it might have a max distance maybe uh, it requires a target actually we can say that so just different things like that uh, so let's go into ranged and let's start adding some of that information uh, and the first thing in this video we'll probably just uh, add the inheritance first because that's gonna be uh, we can talk about how we do that and then we'll start adding some more specific behavior so let's let me zoom in here and in our range we're gonna add the ability behaviors class which we're inheriting from. I mean, we're going to get all this information is now going to be part of our ranged class. Uh, and it's also going to allow us to cast range as an ability behavior. We can transform it and trick the compiler, kind of. So now that we're doing that, let's create the public constructor for it. So ranged. And you'll see right away that it's going to throw an error. Because ability behaviors requires certain things to take, right? It takes arguments. It takes two arguments. A start time and it takes some basic information. So let's add let's add it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a private constant string and this is going to be its name and this is going to be ranged uh, and then we're going to send a private const string description and we'll set that to a ranged attack and here what you do is you set a private if you have if you have a sprite for this you set a private const sprite uh, and then you'll say icon and you'll do equals and you could do like resources dot load which we've used that before and we could send it the path of wherever that icon is for this item uh, but since I'll just comment this out since we're not actually I don't have any uh, icons for it yet but that's something you can do so just remember that um, and then we'll create a private const uh, behavior start time and we'll call it start time we'll set that equal to behavior start time beginning okay so the reason why we're doing this is it lets us use this information within the class but we're gonna also pass it to our base class which we inherit from ability behaviors uh, so on the public constructor constructor here what you need to do is add a colon and we're gonna inherit again from base uh, and this is where we have the base constructor which requires basic information so we're gonna say new basic information and we're gonna pass it our name and our description and then we're gonna send it time which is our start time and I misspelled that there we go so here we're sending in a new basic information of a name and description uh, and we're setting it start time. Let's go into Unity. Let's make sure we don't have any we don't have any errors. And we don't. We got a couple warnings. Well, that's okay. We can worry about those later. Uh, so what we're doing here is we've created a constant string range. We created a constant string uh, description. It just says a range attack or a range behavior. Maybe uh, you can do that's whatever you want. And then we created start time. And if you want an icon, uh, you'd you'd actually since it's a sprite, we'd actually paste it in here. So you do a comma and then sprite because you remember we created those three different constructors for it. But we don't have it for now. You might already. It's up to you. Uh, but now that we've done that, let's talk about a few other things that we might want. We're going to want 
the ability to customize this this ranged behavior maybe you want your ranged behaviors maybe you have a fireball and you have a a rock okay maybe the and the fireball goes farther than the rock well you don't want them you want the same behavior of ranged on it but you want them to act differently so that's what we're going to do here we're going to create a private float and we're going to create min distance private float max distance and here when we create the ranged attack we want to or behavior excuse me we want to specify those so we're going to pass them in so we'll just say float uh, min dist max and then float max dist and uh, we're going to create a couple getters for it and then we'll probably end the video here uh, but, so we'll do a public get oh, excuse me public uh, float and we'll call this max or min distance and we'll do a get return min distance okay and I'm gonna highlight that and paste it in here and we'll do max and in the next video we're gonna to touch more on this and kinda of really start fine-tuning this but the reason why I want this constructor this way is so that we can create multiple variations of what range behavior is it's gonna have the same generic idea that we're gonna tell the the ability that hey look at how far I can and cannot go at the beginning and that's is basically that's its behavior uh, but we'll get in to more of that in the next video so hopefully you learned something hopefully you enjoy it uh, please like subscribe and comment and I'll talk to you guys next time